Okay, I see that we're recording. All righty, praise Yah. Well, it's been refreshing going through James and allowing the scriptures to speak to us these last couple weeks. And uh, we're going to continue in this, but this morning, this 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 portion of scripture really spoke to me because, quite honestly, I didn't really examine it like this ever before, and I didn't see that there is actually a a sin of being favoritism or partiality, if you will. And um, it really is an interesting subject, and I look forward to our discussion afterwards because I'm curious how many of you really understood that being uh, showing partiality or favoritism is actually a sin. So praise Yah. Let's go ahead and begin. So today we're diving into James 2, verses 1 through 13. It's a passage that challenges us on the nature of the true amuna and the treatment of others within the believing community. See, James is writing to believers who profess amuna and Yahusha, but sometimes fall short in showing that amuna through our actions. In this passage, James confronts the sin of partiality or favoritism. And it calls us to live out our amuna by loving others as ourselves and as Mashiach does. So let's read James 2 verses 1 through 13 and explore its meaning alongside other scriptures that echo this call for impartial love. Where it says, my brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious master Yahusha HaMashiach must not show partiality. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. And if you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but you say to the poor man, you stand there or you sit on the floor by my feet, you have not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts. Ponder that for a minute because... You know, I know all of us may have uh, been guilty of this at some point. But do we show partiality or favoritism just by the outward appearance of people? Do we feel it's more awkward to, you know, somebody that's homeless or is not, you know, is poor, if you will? Do you Do you treat them differently? See, James begins with a direct command. Believers in our glorious master, Yahushua HaMashiach, must not show partiality or favoritism. So partiality in this context is the preferential treatment based on external appearances, like wealth or status or influence. See, the underlying issue with partiality is that it judges others based on superficial measures rather than on their value as people made in Yahuwah's image. Partiality is the Greek word, the Strong's uh, 4382, uh, which refers to the act of showing favoritism or partiality, particularly in judgment or treatment of others. It implies making decisions or forming opinions based on external appearances or social status rather than on merit or justice. So in the Brit Hadashah, it is used to emphasize the impartial nature of Allahim's judgment and the call for believers to emulate this divine attribute. So partiality is the act of showing favoritism or judging someone based on external factors, such as wealth, social class, or clothing. 1 Samuel 16:7 says, Yahuwah does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but Yahuwah looks at the heart. Yahuwah sees the value within each person, and as his followers, we're called to see people through his eyes. So when we treat people differently based on appearance, we fall into a worldly way of judging rather than a Mashiach way of loving. See, James goes on to show the inconsistency of partiality with the values of Yahuwah's kingdom. Listen, my brothers, or my dear brothers and sisters, has not Yahuwah chosen those who are poor in the eyes of the world to be rich in Amuna and to inherit the kingdom he promised those who love him? James 2.5. 
See, the gospel lifts up the lowly and shows that wealth and status are irrelevant to Yahuwah's love. Yahusha himself was born in humble circumstances, and he ministered primarily to the marginalized, the poor, and the rejected. We see in Matthew 5, 3, it says, Baruch are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of the Shemayim. 1 Corinthians 1, 27, But Yahuwah chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. Yahuwah chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. So these verses remind us that Yahuwah's kingdom turns worldly values upside down. The values, the poor, uh, he values the poor in spirit, those who know they are spiritually needy, and he uses them to reveal his power and his grace. That reminds me of what you said, Sister Kim, about being strong. You know, it's him. It's him that empowers us. It's him that enables us. It's him that draws us and calls us to go do the works that he has called us to do. We are not capable of doing these things on our own without him. So it's the lowly in spirit, those that actually know they need him. And he, he uses them to reveal himself, his power, his grace to the world. Just like you were saying, Brother Jediah, you know, I mean, what a better way to reveal things to the world then allowing the Ruach uh, uh, to work through you, to empower you to do things that people will look at you and it'll make them ask questions. It'll make them desire to know more about your stance. Uh, why is it that you live your life the way you do? Why don't you go to you know, all these pagan holidays and those type of things? It's because we have a higher value. We, we see the, the value of Yahuwah and his kingdom and his words in our life. Therefore, we choose to live a different, separated life, a set-apart way of life that the world does, really doesn't understand. It, it's, it, it contradicts their, their, their understanding and their ways of life. See, James references the royal law that's found in Scripture. Love your neighbor as yourself. We see this in James 2.8. See, this law, which is a, a command from Yahusha himself, it captures the heart of how we are to treat others. Leviticus 19, verses 17 and 18, you shall not hate your brother in your heart, but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the sons of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am Yahuwah. Mark 12, verses 30 and 31 echoes. It says, Love Yahuwah your Elohim with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. Whatever strength you have, give it to him. Worship him with it. See, the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. And there is no greater commandments than these. So if we just focus our efforts on these, we're going to go a long ways in, in, in our walk with Yahuwah. We're going to begin to emulate him in our lives, in our ways, our thinking, our reactions to others. Romans 13, 8 through 10 says, Owe no one anything except to love each other. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the Torah. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And any other commandment are summed up in this word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the Torah. James 2.9 goes on and says, But if you show partiality, you commit sin, being found guilty by the Torah as transgressors. That's an interesting perspective that I've not really thought about before. But it says it clearly in the scriptures. And it goes on, it says in Romans 2.11, For Yahuwah does not show partiality. First Timothy 5.21, In the presence of Yahuwah and of Yahushua HaMashiach and of the elect Malachim, I charge you to keep these rules without prejudice, uh, prejudging. Do nothing from partiality. Second Chronicles 19.7, Fear Yahuwah and judge with integrity. For Yahuwah, 
our Elohim, does not tolerate perverted justice, partiality, or the taking of bribes. Galatians 3.28, there is neither Hebrew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Yahushua HaMashiach. X. 10, 34 and 35. So Kepha opened his mouth and he said, truly, I understand that Yahuwah shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. Proverbs 28, 21. To show partiality is not good, but for a piece of bread, a man will do wrong. Deuteronomy 10, 17. For Yahuwah your Elohim is Elohim of Elohims and Adonai of Adon, the great, the mighty, and the awesome Elohim, who is not partial and he takes no bribe. Leviticus 19.15 says, You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great but in righteousness you shall judge your neighbor. Jude one sixteen. These are grumblers, male continents, following their own sinful desires. They are loud mouth boasters, showing partiality to gain advantage. Deuteronomy one sixteen seventeen. And I charge your judges at this time, or at that time, here are the cases between your brothers, and judge righteously between a man and his brother, or the alien who is with him. You shall not be partial in judgment. You shall hear the small and the great alike. You shall not be intimidated by anyone, for the judgment is Elohim's, and the case that is too hard for you, you shall bring to me, and I will hear it. Deuteronomy 16:19. You shall not pervert justice. You shall not show partiality, and you shall not accept a bribe, for a bribe binds the eyes of the wise and it subverts the cause of the righteous. Ephesians 6, verse 9. Masters, do the same to them, and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in the Shemayim, and that there is no partiality with him. For Samuel 16, 7. But Yahuwah said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on his height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For Yahuwah sees not as a man sees. Man looks at the outward appearance, but Yahuwah looks on his heart. Job 34.19 Who shows no partiality to princes, nor regards the rich more than the poor, for they are all the work of his hands. Proverbs 24.23 these also are saying of the wise, partiality in judging is not good. Matthew 22, verses 37 through 39. When Yahushua was asked about the greatest commandment, he replied, love Yahuwah your Elohim with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Loving others as your, ourselves means looking past their status or wealth and valuing them with the love Yahuwah has for each of us. See, James highlights that when we show partiality or favoritism, we violate this royal law and we fall into sin. Mercy, it triumphs over judgment. See, James closes this passage by reminding us of the importance of mercy and the seriousness of sin. For whoever keeps the whole Torah and yet stumbles, at just one point is guilty of breaking all of it, James 2.10. He shows us that without Yahuwah's mercy, all of us would stand condemned. James 2.11, for he who said, do not commit adultery, which is found in Exodus 20.14, also said, do not murder, Exodus 20, verse 13. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the Torah. Definitely need to repent, ask for forgiveness, and change your direction, your course. Because these things aren't good. 
all of these things are it's amazing how showing partiality or favoritism as you will comes into alignment with murder and adultery and all of the other things that he tells us are sin this is pretty amazing to me because now this is a whole nother level that people have to look after how do we look at each other how do we treat one another this is going to make us much better in our in our walk with Yahuwah because we're going to be emulating his love for others and doing as his word says or not doing. See, Matthew 7, 1, 2, do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way that you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Micah 6, 8, he has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does Yahuwah require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your Elohim? See, James' words resonate with, Yahuwah's, or with Yahusha's teaching on mercy. See, we are called not to condemn or to judge others, but to extend mercy as we have received it. Mercy is at the heart of Yahuwah's character. He calls us to reflect his mercy by treating others with dignity and compassion. So we need to examine our hearts for favoritism. We should prayerfully examine our attitudes towards others, asking you who would reveal any bias or preferences that lead to partiality. Live out the royal law. Let's ask you who for the grace to love our neighbors as ourselves. Whether they're rich or they're poor, everyone has value in Yahuwah's eyes. We need to reflect on Yahuwah's mercy. So as people who have received Yahuwah's mercy, we should extend that same mercy to others. Let us be known as people who judge with compassion and not condemnation. See, James calls us to an amuna that reflects Mashiach's love, free from partiality, rooted in Yahuwah's kingdom values and overflowing with mercy. Let's invite Yahuwah to shape our hearts so that we can love others as he does. And may our lives reflect an amuna that truly honors him. Both James and Paul both address the way believers should treat others, uh, particularly con concerning partiality. But they approach it from different angles based on their distinct emphasis in the Amuna. See, while James focuses on the practical, outward display of Amuna, Paul tends to approach this theme through theological arguments about justification, unity in Mashiach, and the nature of love. So let's kind of look at how they how how James deals with this versus how how Paul explains how we should deal with this. We see in James 2, 1 through 13 that James is con concerned with the way believers act towards one another, specifically within the community of Amuna. For James, Amuna is only genuine when it manifests in actions that align with Yahuwah's values, like loving others without partiality. James addresses partiality as a contradiction to the royal law of loving one's neighbor as oneself. See, this teaching reflects his focus on the ethical implications of Amuna, especially in how we treat the marginalized, the poor, and those with less societal status. See, James implies that partiality is, is not just wrong, but is incompatible with true Amuna. To him, a living Amuna will be one that naturally expresses itself in just actions. James doesn't delve deeply into theological explanations or justifications, but rather urges believers to evaluate the authenticity of their Amuna based on how they treat others. And this is a good barometer for us to examine how we look at others, how we treat each other. You know, it's important. That, that we that we do this so that we can recognize where we may be coming up short. Where Paul, unity in Mashiach as the basis for equality. See, Paul, on the other hand, addresses the subject of equality in several places, focusing on the unity and the inclusion brought through, uh, about through Mashiach. For Paul, we are all to value other believers because we are one in Mashiach. In Galatians 3.28, he writes, There is neither Hebrew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, 
nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Yahushua HaMashiach. See, Paul emphasizes that in Mashiach, societal dis distinctions are nullified because everyone shares equal access to Yahuwah and equal standing in the kingdom. Now we want to take a look at the key themes in Paul's writings, unity and reconciliation, two very important aspects of our walk. See, Paul emphasizes that Mashiach's death and resurrections create a new family where all barriers, social, economic, and ethnic, are broken down. For example, in Ephesians 2, 14 and 16, Paul speaks of Yahusha as the one who brings shalom, tearing down the dividing wall of hostility between Hebrews and Gentiles. That goes back to how we treat each other and, and, and how people view us as we're living our lives out, being set apart. You know, this is where it brings Salome into our lives, and it tears down that dividing wall that is prevalent in, in, in society today, big time. You know, but, you know, it, it's interesting that he's not bringing a distinction between the Hebrews and the Gentiles, because if we all come to the belief and the knowledge of Yahushua HaMashiach is the son of Yahuwah, then we are in unity. We are, we are one in Yahushua following after you know his directions his his guidance the things that he outlined for us that he walked out for us and if they are walking you know meaning whether you're a gentile or whether you're a, a hebrew however you see yourself being grafted in because we all got to be grafted in to Jerusalem you know to be the Yas Yasharel is 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 not as it was a blood at one point even though blood is still important, there's still those that are, you know, of the bloodline of Yasserel. But Yahuwah is so gracious that he has opened a way, he's made a way for those outside of the bloodline to also be grafted in, to be part of Yasserel. So if you are in that group of folks, you do have those beliefs, then it is okay for you to call yourself a Yasserlite. You are Yasserel. Praise Yah. Love is the fulfillment of the Torah. See, Paul, like James, values love as central to believers' ethics. In Romans 13, 8 to 10, he writes, love is the fulfillment of the Torah, making it clear that loving one's neighbors is the core of true believers' behavior, leaving no room for partiality. And let's look at you know, a comparison of Amuna in action versus the theological foundation that Paul teaches. While both James and Paul denounce partiality, they approach it with different underlying motivations. James is concerned with how partiality undermines the practical outworking of Amuna. He wants believers to reflect Yahuwah's impartial love in their daily conduct. And he thinks, and he links the sin of partiality with the failure to live out the royal law, to love one's neighbor. His message is often more focused on demonstrating Amuna in real world actions. Paul argument against partiality is more theological. It's grounded in the beliefs that all are equally justified by Amuna and united in Mashiach. And since all believers have been accepted by Yahuwah, they should, accept one another without discrimination. See, Paul's writings on unity emphasize the theological equality of all believers before Yahuwah. Now bringing the two together, Amuna demonstrate, demonstrated in love. See, together, James and Paul's perspective provide a, a holistic view. James reminds us that Amuna is not merely an inner belief, but something that should transform our outward actions. Paul's teachings roots this call to impartiality and the new identity that we have in Mashiach, where societal divisions are broken down. When we combine James' call to action with Paul's theological foundation, we see a full picture of the believer's call to impartial love, rooted in Amuna, empowered by unity in Mashiach, and expressed in how we treat 
every person equally. Freja, for his word, for revealing these truths through his word so that we can be stronger in our walk. You know, that we can walk in a different way than what we had prior to knowing these truths. These truths are gonna set us apart. These truths are gonna raise us to another level in our understanding in, in, in the walk that we have with Yahuwah. And I don't know about y'all, but this, this message has really touched me profoundly because I didn't see, I didn't see things this way before. And uh, I don't know why I didn't see it, but I didn't. But now I do, and now that means I have to make some changes. Praise y'all. So I'm going to go to those with their hands up, and uh, let's have a good discussion this morning about what we've studied. Hallelujah. All right, Sister Kim is first up. Good morning. Shabbat shalom to you. Shabbat shalom. Um, I love the topic that we're talking about right now. Um, this is actually something that I've realized for a long time, and I've taken it very serious. And I work uh, for my job. I'm a server, and I work in a restaurant. And working in the restaurant and seeing the other servers and how they purposely don't give good service to certain people because of the way they're dressed, because of skin color. And they're like, oh, they're not going to tip me good because of, you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever those things. And so they go and they give not as great service. And of course, they don't get tipped as well because of that, not because of those things. But um, me, I always make sure to give everybody the exact same service if they're dressed really nice they have these you know fancy jewelry on and stuff I'm not gonna sit there and give them a better service than the table sitting right next to them that you know they're normal people kind of thing and even when it comes down to like at my job we have a lot of regulars and it's a non-expensive restaurant so we do get a lot of you know retired people, elderly people, uh, you know, people that aren't so rich. And we have regulars that do come into our job and they'll only tip two or three dollars. And a lot of the servers there, they'll purposely not give them good service and they'll talk down on them because they tip like that. But I always, even though like my attitude is it's two dollars more than I had before, I'm still going to give them great service. And then there's also this other couple that comes in and I know that they're special ed. I'm not sure on their diagnosis, but they come in, they're super sweet, but they don't tip anything at all. And the other servers are very rude and mean to them. Like I've seen them actually throw their their plate down onto their table because they're upset they had to serve them. And, you know, I don't have the heart to sit there and give these people that bad service. They probably have no idea that that's what they're supposed to do in a restaurant. And so I still make sure to go out my way and be very kind to them, even though I know that, you know, that's the way I'm making my living off of that tip. But I'm not going to sit there and be rude and mean to people because of certain things such as, you know, the way they're dressed or their, you know, whatever way they're discriminating like that. And I've also had many times as a server where I'm just, you know, you're just serving tables. You could have conversations, but I'm not preaching to my tables or anything. That's something kind of technically not allowed to do while you're working, but I can't tell you how many times I've had tables stop me and they'll ask me something along the lines like, a, are you saved? Do you believe? Are you Christian? Like, you know, those kind of things. And, you know, I'll respond, yes, I believe, you know, those kind of things. I've been saved for however many years. Um, and their immediate responses, I could tell because of the way I've treated them. And I, it's not like I'm doing anything crazy. I'm just serving them. I'm serving them their food. I'm having small talk, doing those things. And it's those little things, you know, even like in your work life and stuff like that, where you just, you, you know, never shown partiality. And especially on my job, the people that do show those partialities are also people that are very much wordy with their mouths. They say they believe and they say that they love and they use the name Jesus, but then they go around and they talk about these elderly poor people that come in and tip only $2. And it really, it really breaks my heart. And I've tried to mention things before and it just, they just get angry. They don't want to hear what I have to say. 
And it's, I'm really glad you talked about this because this is, that is something that is heavy on my mind, especially throughout the week when I am at work and I'm witnessing it happening constantly. Well, praise God, you know, just by your actions, it shows, you know, the love that you have for people, you know, that's the difference. I think that's what people are recognizing in you. Um, you're treating them kindly and you're doing your best job and, mm -hmm. you know. You know, and, and that's how we should. It's a, it's an expression of who we are as people of Yahuwah, you know. They don't, you don't need to preach to them. You know, your actions speak loud. They really do. And uh, I think that's what you're acknowledging. Yeah. And, you know, even I have uh, any time, like, I've had other servers, like, they'll be like, I don't want to serve this table. Can you get them? They're not going to tip me good because, you know, they a lot of the times they'll be like they're black they're not going to tip well that's a very common thing at the restaurant I work with I have a lot of racist co-workers and I every time I've done that when they didn't want a table because of skin color or something like that they usually give me a blessing and it usually comes whenever I'm having hard times and of course they'll be upset because they didn't want to serve them but they ended up tipping me very well but it it just so happens to happen at the wrong time I'm behind on a bill and they gave me a blessing tip and it's because, you know, you, I, I'm just loving everyone and giving them, you know, I, I truly enjoy serving people. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I love this topic that you've talked about and how it does play out in real life and everyday real life. And it's something we need to consider every single day in our walk. Praise God. I agree. Praise God. You know, that's it's sad that people judge people off of their skin color or, you know, their clothing, you know, how they're dressed, how they even might, you know, just just judging people in a in an ir irrelevant way. You know, and then your last statement is is so powerful because it, it proves, you know, people look through the eyes of racism, you know, Yahuwah doesn't see none of that. You know, Yahuwah sees his creation and he loves each one of us equally. And if we're his people, if we're if we're really made in his image and, and he's called us and he's commanded us to, to, to treat people in a certain way, that goes a long ways in expressing our connection to Yahuwah. You know, that we don't look at people and judge them. I mean, our whole assembly is made up with of diver, a diverse, you know, group of people, all different skin colors. But we're all united in one faith, one in, in in Mashiach, and that's what all that matters. You know, I love each one equally. You know, I don't try to, for for whatever reason, uh, uh, Yahuwah's not. You know, He's helped me that I've not been able to see that in those ways all through my life. You know, He's He's put me together with people of different nationalities and skin colors and thoughts, even. You know. And you learn by by treating each other in a certain way, it changes people's attitudes. You know, it really does affect people. You know, somebody thinks they're going to be discriminated against and they're treated with kindness and respect. I think they might want to tip you a little bit more just because you, you did that right, you know. So I appreciate you, sister. You know, these these lessons are are, are life-changing they really are they make us look at and examine things differently than we've ever had before Vic and Cindy Shabbat Shalom are you there oh I gotta I gotta unmute you where'd you go <laughs> there you are right there hey Shabbat. there you are Shabbat Shalom brother Shabbat Shalom uh, you know what? I'm I'm also uh, like him, uh, Sister Kim Pri. I'm grateful for this lesson because I think it's been a very important lesson uh, that we need to deal with. And I'm I I I think it's a great thing that we understand. We as believers understand which side of this we need to be on. Because uh, before I ask my question, though, I wanted to know. Uh, so is this lesson in reference to people of like faith only, or is it um, anyone that is poor? 
Well, I think uh, the the gist of it is 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 your brother and your sister, you know, like like believers. But I believe, you know, you you continue to show that to to all, you know, whether they're you know, if you see a poor person and they aren't a believer, well, if you treat them with kindness and respect and the things that you know that we're that we're learning here today, that's a that could bring an opportunity for them to also know the truth to want to know more. Why are you the way you are? Nobody treats me this way. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of ways that you can, that you can look at it. But I think just the love of Yahuwah should be in us. It should be, it should be something that we display naturally, continually, you know, it should be, but specifically with our brothers and our sisters, because we are believers in, you know, in Mashiach. Therefore we're united. We're one. We should have each other's backs. We shouldn't, you know, look at each other because I might have more money than you do. And, you know, so there I'm looking forward, looking down on you. You're you're judging somebody off of parameters that, you know, that really have no merit in Yahuwah's kingdom because he doesn't look at your wealth or your riches or your clothing and all that type of stuff. It doesn't matter to him, you know, so. You know, I I believe the answer to your question is we should always be displaying loving our neighbors, but particularly our brothers and sisters. I am in total agreement with you, brother, because, um, you know, to me, when I read in scripture, your neighbor, it doesn't specify whether that person is rich or poor or, uh, or even a faithful brother or sister. Uh, and to me, I've read where uh, the lowest person in the world was created in the very image of the Most High. So uh, being that person created in the very image of the Most High, shouldn't matter whether they're rich or poor or ugly or pretty or whatever. Uh, so here's my main question. And I'm going to bring the curtain down on the, uh, on the live reality that we're all living because but we read the word not just to be hearers, but to be doers. Um, and there's something going on right now, which is classic, uh, classic uh, in this uh, principle, the spiritual principle of having respect of persons. And that is... Um, the poor immigrant that's coming, running away from their own country, fearing death and coming to this country because they've heard that we're a country of freedoms and liberties nobody else has. They're looking for a better place to live. They're looking for more opportunity. They want the same thing that we all want, that we all fight and hold on to so dearly. Uh, so to me, it's important that we as believers understand what side of this we're on, because this is live. This is happening as we speak. Um, should, or maybe the question should be, are these people also considered, uh, in the principle of being, uh, a respecter of persons because, and I'm not talking about the people that are coming that are evil and have evil thoughts and evil plans uh, and they want to kill, murder, or rape. I'm not talking about these type of people. God has his judgment for them also. I'm talking about the decent people that have families and are seeking to have a better life and they're coming here a lot of times walking for hundreds of miles before they get here and during all kinds of, of uh, difficulty. Uh, are these people also considered, um, or is it, or how do we apply being a respecter of persons with this, these people? Are, is it hypocritical of us to say, no, close the door on all migrants that are coming in, all migrants, instead of uh, weeding out the bad from the good, and by bad I mean, like I say, criminals. Uh, yeah, criminals have their place and should be kept in their place, uh, but the decent people that are families and coming here for a better life, aren't 
aren't we being hypocritical as 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 believers uh in saying no close the gates and all minorities we have too many minorities and this isn't it also hypocritical of us as a nation uh as a country to uh to set up excuses and reasons why we should close the door on them instead of making room for them and 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 allowing them to enter in legally and allowing them to uh, add to the tax base, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Isn't it kind of hypocritical of us to say, yeah, we serve Yahuwah and we obey Yahuwah's instruction and his laws, part of his law being that we should not be a respecter of persons, yet we condone uh, sometimes by our uh, by not saying anything, just stand by and watch it all. Uh, don't we condone to being hypocrites ourselves by not speaking up against the fact that families are being separated, uh, traumatized, young children, elderly, uh, because we are being respecters of persons, even though we say we serve the other. Well, to answer your question, uh, that's a, you know, you're talking about a country that really doesn't belong to Yahuwah. I mean, he, we, this country doesn't, doesn't honor Yahuwah, you know? Um, so that's a, it's, even though we live here, you know, are we, are we uh, in control of who comes and who doesn't? I don't, we don't have any say in any of that, but my own personal opinion is, you know, they, we can't open our borders if I'm looking at it as a country to everybody in the world to just come because they want a better life. They got to come through a certain way, you know, and then, and whether it's broken or not, the, you know, they're still, they got to come in a legal way, which there is a legal way for them to do that. But for, for us to, I don't think that believers in Yahuwah, you know, are being hypocritical in any way because we don't have any control of any of that. How we treat those folks, if we have encounters with them, yeah, I would say that we have to treat them the same way, that we should show them love and kindness. But, you know, if they're if they're in this country in an illegal way, then they've broken the law, you know, and, and it doesn't matter what, what land that we're from, whether it's United States or whether it's Israel or wherever you might live in this world, you all have borders. Uh, you have sovereignty. You, you gotta. You can't just let everybody come into your country, you know, because it would the country would not be able to survive that way. Especially if everybody's not, you know, brought into oneness of language and and beliefs and that. Because even our own country is not that way. You know, we got people that believe all kinds of different things, and you know, they look down on people. So I think my advice is that. We need to stay within our confines of our own homes, our own lives, how we treat those that are come in contact with. But, you know, that's a difficult question to try to get into a worldly uh, way of trying to ask a question about that the, the country doesn't really see things the way that Yahuwah does. So we can only operate within our own confines of our own being and how we treat others. That's really all I can really say about that. Other than, other than giving you my personal opinion on it, which really doesn't really matter because it's not going to affect anything in this country, you know, with, with the illegals, you know. Um, I, guess, I guess I'm being driven by specifically verse 9 where it says, but if ye have respect to persons, doesn't say any condition, it says, but if ye have respect to persons, commit sin. Uh, and it says, and are convinced of the law as transgressors. Uh, that's what moves me to ask the question because. Uh, well, I think that comes to the answer still comes to the same as that you're in control of your actions, not the actions of your country that don't right. believe the same as you. So I still think it's the same. You know, I'm not being a respecter of persons. I'm not. I'm not uh, showing favoritism to anyone because they're illegal or they're not, because that doesn't have any bearing on me. I can only treat those people in my in my life, you know, those people I have in contact with. 
So that's my responsibility, you know. To, to... I uh, I apologize if if I uh, if you think that I'm saying you personally. When I say you, it's a no. General. I'm not talking about. I'm not offended. It, I didn't take it that way. I'm just telling you. That's all I can control is my own, my own surroundings, my own interactions with people. What the con what the country does, that's different. You know, that's on them. You know, if you want to be involved in the politics and all of that type of thing, now you're getting into a whole nother area, you know, in your walk that, you know, are we are we called to, to do that type of stuff? Are we called to be concerned about those things? You know, and I don't see scripture saying that. Our our concern is our walk with Yahuwah and Yahusha and our walk with each other and how we treat others that are to come into our lives to be an example to them. That's as far as I can really say, you know, in regards to that, you know, I understand. Well, appreciate, I understand uh, where your mind comes from that scripture. And it's a good question. It's just like, I think that, you know, we can only control our own environment, our own atmosphere, you know, those that we have in contact with and how we live our lives every day. You know, how we treat each other, how we treat others. That's that's really the confines of that scripture. So that's what we're going to be judged upon, I believe. So, praise y'all. Praise y'all, brother. All right, Sister Essie. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Um, I really love this this study. Um, it, 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 it also reminds me, I don't know if I'm going out of context, but it also reminds me of sometimes like, will be um, a little partial to certain sins, uh, certain sins that people commit and, uh, you know, um, certain sins, you know, uh, certain people we don't want to deal with because of a certain, a cer certain simple way that they, um, that they, uh, that life that they're living, like, you know, you may, it may be like a, a hierarchy, like you don't want to, certain things that we allow in our lives, certain people we allow in our lives. Like we may, we know that this person is a known uh, uh, person that, you know, is deceptive and steals and stuff like that. Maybe a family member, but one family member may be homosexual and we may find that, that sin as being a little more e egregious than the person that is, you know, deceptive and we may allow, say, oh, we don't, I don't, you know, I don't allow the homosexuality in my house and stuff. But at the same time, we there's a person in the, in your family that may be deceitful, you know, and, and uh, but you still allow that person, you know, in your house, you're a little more partial to that sin sinful lifestyle and um it just kind of it kind of takes me there too even though we know all sin is the same to yahuwah all sin and so if you're not going to accept uh if you don't if you're going to have the same standard for a person coming into your house that is a homosexuality i mean homosexual you kind of should have that same you know the, the you feel that same way about a person that you know is deceptive and a cheater and you know, you, you shouldn't allow any of that things in the confounds of, of your home. That That's the way I'm looking at it. That's the way I see it. Because you're being partial to sin now. No sin is greater than, uh, you know, than the next. It's all sin in Yahuwah's eyes. I don't know. I may be over speaking, but that's, that's what it kind of like took me to, you know. Well, the scripture says for us to judge righteously. So, you know, like you said, you know, we, we have people, you know, and, I, and, and having people in your lives that are known in that way, sometimes you can't avoid it. Sometimes they're part of your family, you know, uh, but, you know, you still have how you have to handle yourself, how you respond to that has to be a righteous it has to be in righteousness. It has to be done in an appropriate manner in talking and in, in dealing with them. Um, you know, you're, you're going to be looking at a whole lot of people that are going to have sin in their life. So like you said, one sin's not worse than the other. So there's people that have sin in their lives that don't even realize it. 
I bet you there's a lot of people that don't realize that showing favoritism or partiality is a sin. I know that I didn't see it that way. And um, so there's a lot of people that walk around doing these things and are, are not even realizing it. So that where it comes unto you and I is, you know, judging righteously, meaning that we got to show them the truth, you know, and the errors of the way. And that's really as far as we can go with that, as we have to, we have to d just continue to walk in righteousness and, you know, and continue to, to try to show them the truth. If they reject it, well, now you got another decision to make, but, you know, we still got to love, you know, our neighbors and sometimes loving people doesn't mean we have to agree with their lifestyles because most everybody in this world is, is, it has sin of some sort. Unless of course you're walking and, and you're, and you're uh, repenting on it daily. People in this world don't look at things that way. They're not looking at their sin in that, in that light. So that's where you and I come in. That's where our, our voices need to be heard. And, but we don't bring condemnation. You know, we just, we bring truth to the matter and what happens from there, let Yahuwah do his work. So that's kind of how I see, you know, dealing with people that are in a state of sin, put it that way, you know, because we don't want nobody to perish. We should, we, we and we should be the, the, the truth that they, that they hear how their lives are. And some people might get offended at you for it. You know, but uh, you still have to you still have to deliver truth in a loving, kind way. You know that you you know so. Praise Yah. Yeah, I agree with you, Sister June. It does remind me of Jonah too. You know, you know we're <laughs> there's so many things that Scripture brings back to mind. So I appreciate that, uh, Sister Essie. Sister Robbie, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Thank you, Brother Rick, for this very timely uh, lesson. It's just very, very much needed. I was thinking of how you combined the Apostle Paul with the theology with, um, you know, James, our brother James, but how he ties it in with our relationship with our brothers and sisters within the faith. And it ties in very well because in the writings of the Apostle Paul, he talks about how there's neither Jew nor, you know, Greek or Hebrew nor Greek and male or female or rich or poor, that in Yahushua Mashiach, we all are one. Uh, this is very important to stress because there's been people who have rejected the New Testament because they don't realize they're showing partiality. They put so much emphasis on a bloodline and that they are these elite uh, royal class and that they don't feel like others should be accepted or brought in to have the same oneness, the same equality in the blessing that come to all those who are grafted in. And so it's actually a sin. You're sinning when you show that partiality within the body of the Mashiach. You know, we all are grafted in to be one. And um, it's very, it's a very good point. You know, that's just some of the stuff that they have a problem with. And um, I'm just glad to see in our assembly that we are one in love and unity. We don't see bloodline. We don't see skin color. We don't see nationality or see anything. We go by what the Bible tells us to do. We all love each other within the faith. It doesn't matter if some have more money than others or, or whatever the status is. We all are receiving the same love from Yahuwah. So we're required to show the same love. If we don't, then we fail at the Torah. And so uh, thank you for this lesson. It was very good. Praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah, sister. So much for us to learn from. And I appreciate that we have these uh, moments where we can study the scripture and allow it to really speak to us because it transforms us in our, in our understanding and our thinking and our actions and how we live our lives. It's important. And praise God that, that we have a community where we don't, we see each other with different eyes. You know, we, we love each other, you know, no matter where you're from, what you look like, what you have, 
those things really are, are they, they're meaningless in you know, his eyes and they should be meaningless in our eyes. You know, we should love what, give, show love to one another continuously, you know, be there for one another, support one another, because if we are one in Mashiach, then we're called to oneness with one another. I should be concerned what happens to you as well as you should be concerned what happens to me. And if we can help one another, we should. You know, that's what this assembly is founded on, you know. And praise Yah that I that I have found these these other brothers that see the same as I do and we've united to, and that Yahuwah has brought us together to make this happen, that we have this assembly. The world needs it. And we're all proof of that. We're from all over the place. So that's a good thing. We're diversified and we're unified in Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Brother Dean. Shabbat Shalom, my brother. Shabbat Shalom, Elder Rick. Shabbat Shalom, family. Can you hear me? I can. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Um, so a couple of things I wanted to say. Um, one of the things that were mentioned earlier on, uh, one of the sisters was speaking about uh, this thing around saying, you know, I am almost like embracing that I am weak, you know, embracing weakness. And I think in Joshua 1, 9, you know, we are commanded to be strong, you know. So um, that just makes me to, to, to believe that, uh, you know, what we say after the I am is very important. You know, what we say after we say I am is very important because we so easily can make, give room, give room, uh, you know, to to be weakened um, when just by in disobedience, you know, um, because it's a command that we be strong. And yes, also the scripture is clear, the, the joy of Yahuwah is our strength. So, you know, we just need to be in and be close and we will be strong. You know, you don't need to worry about uh, hearing, not hearing when you are that close, <laughs> you know. Um, but what I wanted to speak about in reference to partiality is uh, when Yahushua says, you know, why do you call me good? None is good, but, you know, Yahuwah, okay? Um, so this, you know, they're calling him good because they're seeing all these great exploits he's doing, yeah? And, you know, he's not just, he's not a magician. He's He's not just someone who is skilled in, in he, you know, healing and herbs. And he is, you know, the, the only begotten son. He, he, he is our master, our, our, our king of kings. He like, you know, he is, he, there's no name above his name. Like he, he is, he is the way, right? And he uh, showcases his uh, understanding and love for the only one, you know, that there, that should be esteemed in this life, yeah, and even and even in the Shamaim is Yahuwah, because he says none is good but the Father. So this makes me to believe that when, if if you can't if he's saying that he's not even trying to receive that for himself, that you can call me good. He's saying, uh, you know, he's not saying disrespect me, but he's saying don't get the order wrong. You know, don't get the order wrong. You know, just like in Seek Ye First, the kingdom, don't get the order wrong. Yeah. Um, and in reference to, you know, being a respecter of persons, something, I just had this feeling like he was saying, don't, don't, like, if I don't, if you don't do it to me, if I don't tell you to do it to me, do not slip and find yourself doing it for anything or anyone else. Because I, I, I could be considered uh what's the word validated to receive it yeah all power and authority has been given to me right but i i'm telling you give it to yahuwah give it to my father just like how he you know would break uh, uh look up and he would pray you know and he, he would always acknowledge his father he would all so it's to me it's about an act of obedience and to to be a respecter of persons, I can see how, it, 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 to me, it's now reading as a sin. Because if Yahusha himself 
is saying, Yahuwah only, Yahuwah only, my father only, my father only. You know, yeah. So, yeah, that to me just makes me think about that. It makes me think about that. Hallelujah. Most definitely. A lot of things for us to to, uh, to ponder, you know, that we don't always have at the forefront of our minds. Um, but there is some scriptures that talk about, you know, our weakness. So, you know, there is there is scriptures that can that, that will speak to our weakness, such as uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9 through 11. It says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that the Mashiach's power may rest on me. This is why, for Mashiach's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults and in hardships, in persecutions and in difficulties, because I believe it gives the opportunity for us to receive the strength that is outside of us. You know, if we can be weak, but in him, we are strong. You know, he is our strength. And he's the one that strengthens us in our weaknesses. That like, uh, uh, let's see here. I think it's, where is it? I was just looking at it. Anyways, there was, oh, here it is. Romans 8, 26 says, likewise, the Ruach helps us in our weakness. So we're going to be weak. We're going to have our moments of weak. But he does tell us to be strong. But I believe he's telling us that we have to be strong in him. You know that we have to know where our strength comes from, you know, and he, you know, that's uh, that's a foundation of of our walk with here is that, you know, we know that he's with us and he's and we can do all things through Mashiach, you know, who strengthens us, who's inside of us, who 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 leads and guides our lives. So praise Yah, you know, for our for our ability to trust in Him, brother Charles. Good morning, sir. Shabbat Shalom. Are you there, Brother Charles? Yeah. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, all me? right. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing a couple of things. Um, um, when it says something about um, when you are invited to a wedding, you know, sit in the back and wait for the one who was, who was, um, who, who, who the, sit, sit, sit with the shame and take the Lord's place. But when you are invited, go sit down in the Lord's place so that when you're invited comes he he may say to you friend go up higher so this kind of reminds me of of us but also yahushua because he came from a higher estate he came down low and when the father at a certain time when he came time yahuwah called him up and he 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 anointed him and brought him up to to be in the front you know he because he came he, he came down low for him to come down low from that estate, ain't too many people going to do this in this world because they don't have that humble. But he had a mission. So it's just like with me, I see you, Brother Rod and Yadiel, and whoever else is supposed to be elders. Y'all invited to a, to a debate or something, I'm going to sit in the backseat. That ain't my place. I'll let y'all come up, go up there. But when you call me up, then I'll come up because I might have something to say that you all are not... um um. Um, speaking on, so I take my low place in the back. I don't, I don't have no exaltation in my heart. So that's what I'm kind of thinking of. Also, um, Ecclesiastes nine. Um, wait, is it Ecclesiastes nine? Wait, no, my. Yeah, it's Ecclesiastes nine. So I'm gonna read from. Um, I'm gonna try to be real quick. Um, from seven to nine. It says, "Go eat your bread with joy and drink your wine with the merry heart." For Elohim has already accepted your works. Let your garments always be white and let your head lack no oil. Live joyfully with the wife whom you love all the days of your vain life, which he has given you under the sun, all your days of vanity. For there, for that is your portion in life and in the labor which you perform under the sun. What so, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with, with your might. For there is no work or de or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. So, so do it with all of your might and show no partiality to in these in these um 
faces. So um, that's that's one way I can see see it in that way too. And um, another thing when it comes to um, the uh, the 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 immigrant thing. I've been trying to hold my peace so I can bring these things out to to bring bring what I'm seeing for Deuteronomy. But for right now, there's a target board. Just just everybody see a target board. There's different targets, and the main target is in the middle. It's a target right outside of the middle. Then it goes bigger and bigger. There's a main target in the middle, and that is spiritual Yasharal. The target on the outside. I don't want to say right now. I'll leave it at that. But when it comes to the immigrant thing, yes, we should love love those who come from a different place because Yahuwah said, told us the same thing. For we were once strangers in a strange land. But at the same time, when these people are being brought over here, there's enemies brought over here, and there are genuine people trying to make a way. And I just want to say, this is a plan. Rather, Yahuwah said it was already going to happen, or because he seen what was going to happen, he said it. These people, some of these things are happening because history is repeating itself, and also it's to cause chaos, because you have to look at it in that prospect, because that's exactly what's happening. And here in Chicago, the gangs are getting into it with the um, what's the names, but this is a plan, because they are trying to cause chaos. So we have to look at it in the, in the spiritual sense. I can't talk on it like you said, Brother Rick. It's a whole bunch of stuff that goes into this. But the target is spiritual Yashara. On the outside is those who may become from the bloodline and then those, all of us as a people. I, I can't explain it right now, but just know that Satan is targeting everybody, but he has his main target. But praise God, bro. But you know what? We have a main target too, that bullseye in the middle. And that's the Torah that gets us there. That's that bullseye we got to shoot for. We got to be aiming at it at least. And that's what makes us, you know, Yasharel. That's what separates us and sets us apart. You know, so keep shooting for the bullseye, brother. I know I am. And I, I got some help. You know, scripture helps me zero in. Praise y'all. Sister Christine, good. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Elder Rick and everybody. Um, I'm really thankful that this topic has come up. And please excuse me because I'm not a really good speaker. I have a lot of anxiety, so <laughs> I might ramble. Um, but I'm really glad that this topic has come up because um, I worked for a specific uh, religious organization. So I ran a food bank slash drop-in center. And um, it created quite a bit of confusion of what expectations are for us to do in regards to serving and not being judgmental. Um, I really enjoyed the job, but it created, like I said, some confusion and fear. Um, because most of the majority of people that we were serving were um, you know, the very less fortunate, a lot of drug addicted. Um, so it's not that I didn't enjoy that aspect. I had great compassion. It was a great struggle of what the expectation was to keep, let's say, um, my staff safe, volunteers safe, as well as myself. Um because within the organization, there wasn't a lot of boundaries set. And being that it was run basically from board members, um, there wasn't really anybody to speak to. So it was just kind of what they had said, that was it. Um, so I guess I've struggled after leaving because it became such a huge burden that I didn't know um, how to keep everybody safe that I just kind of left. And I left feeling like, I did a really bad job. So So what are your thoughts, Elder Rick, just in regards to what is our expectation in that manner?
it's hard when you're working for an uh, an organization that has control over things and you really don't have a say. And when you feel, I guess, out of control in that kind of sense, I can understand your, your feelings that you want to just kind of leave. And, you know, if you feel like you're called to do that, then, you know, maybe that's something you need to look into further to see if that's, you know, the door's open for something similar where you do have the ability to, uh, somebody that can give you direction and guidance and that you can share things with, you know, cause I'm sure that they're out there, <clears throat> but it's difficult when you, when you feel a burden like that and you don't really know what to do cause you don't have authority to do what you feel like you should do. So that's a difficult situation to be in. Um, but <clears throat> you know, you did your best for that, for them folks that you were serving while in that capacity. And that's all really you can do. But if you have that opportunity again, you might see it through different lenses and you might have a different opportunities to, you know, to be able to be used in that way again, if that's something that you enjoy doing. So, you know, our past situations, you know, they can sometimes confound us because of the experiences that we have and, trying to do things in this world with people that don't believe and don't walk the same way is difficult. So uh, that's really all I can really say in that capacity to help you. But, you know, I appreciate your heart. You know, I can hear that. And you did a good job sharing your, your, your story or your testimony. So praise you. All right. We got time for probably one more brother, brother Franz. Well, I'm sorry. I just, there you go. Shabbat Shalom, Elder Rick. I appreciate you calling on me. I know we have a, a limited amount of time and and something that is uh, that um, Brother Vic came up, Vic and Cindy, out, but Brother Vic brought up is something that I've really sort of, you know, chewed on for quite some time about how we look at what this nation calls illegals. Um, and, and my heart is is torn because I can see how, as as uh, as Charles said, you know, there's a target for for the enemy within this land, and that target is to get those people who have been identified by the powers in this land as strangers in this land to become identifying with the powers that are calling others strangers in this land, and and I think. From a spiritual standpoint, I don't want to be on the side that vexes a stranger because they have not entered into a border that is established by a lawless nation. Because in the same standard, that would be like me, uh, an Egyptian, uh, having issues with Abraham entering into Egypt because he didn't do it the right way. Or Yosha entering into Egypt, fleeing Herod because he didn't do it the right way. And I think this is one of those times where having an understanding as to, to, to the history of who Yasharal is and the fact that they were strangers, not only in Egypt, but also in Canaan at times, th that, that applying that to where we are now gives us an insight in how to address what this nation would call illegals. Because to me, as Vic pointed out, that is exactly like being a respecter of persons. There is a classification that this nation has placed on a people and said they are not subject to the same judgment or laws that we are subject to because we did it the right way. But if we have transgressed in one thing, we have transgressed in all things. So we condemn ourselves by the very same thing that we apply to someone else because we claim that they are illegal, which of course is not coming from scripture. That's coming from the lawless laws of this land. So if the enemy is seeking to deceive us, we have to be very careful in every single opportunity that this co this topic comes up. And to all those that are listening, we have to be careful to not unwittingly align ourselves with this nation and how it points to other people as being less than or illegal or as all being criminals and all being, you know, evil people because that same standard with which we identify with, separate from the fact that we may never individually be affected by it, but by the same standard with which we point outward, Yah will judge us accordingly. 
And I don't want to be on the side in which Yah says, why would you vex your stranger when you yourself have so much cause to be under the same judgment that you have applied to someone else? So I think what Vic is saying is, a, is, is heartfelt, and I receive the, the correction because I can see how nowadays it is very easy to get swept into the, the fervor of saying this is our land. This is, we deserve you know, the top dollar for everything that comes in, and it should not be going to the other. But the, the, the flip side would be, why not we bless the stranger? Why not we take care of them? Why not we love them so that they may have an experience that is what scripture says we're supposed to provide in this nation, contrary to what the rest of the nation does, because the rest of the nation will hate them. Absolutely. But if they find a home, immigrant or otherwise, amongst us, they should be welcomed because we were once strangers in Egypt. So I just wanted to point that out, that this is a, as, as uh, Charles said, this is a this is a spiritual thing, and, and I never want to be on the side of saying you are not equal or you are less than or you need to come in some other way because that same standard will be applied to me. So praise y'all for this conversation, and I hate to leave it on that, Elder Rick, because I know you probably are going to want to you know, engage on that, but, but praise y'all. No, I think you did well. I think you said it well. Uh, you know, I'm not disagreeing with anything that you had to say. You know, I think that we got to just mind how we are internally because, you know, we're really not, I mean, we're, we're, we're part of this nation only because, you know, we're part of this world, but, you know, we are set apart. We're separate from the actions that they're doing. So we can only control our own. So that's really all I had to say. I'm going to turn this over to you, Sister June. I see you got your hand up if you'd like to, to add something uh, before we conclude, but, uh, I appreciate everybody's input. Sister June? Uh, no, I'm good. I'll, I'll pass because I know we're out of time. So praise you. All righty. Well, who is doing the uh, announcements today? Is that you, Sister Diane?